Hello and welcome to Prophoto Academy Live, episode twenty-six. Twenty-six. Yep, exactly. Twenty-six hours of fantastic Con stuff, uh, content. <laughs> A lot of, of fun, light. at least. We're yes. having a lot of fun. Anders Handla here, and of course David Bishow here on this course. side. Uh, and we see there are a lot of other people here. We have a whole bunch from the US, all the way from New Jersey to Seattle. And then we have a stop in Columbus, Ohio as well, in between. Way, Stockholm, Munich, and South Africa as well. Hello. Uh, and we got Stuttgart here. Excellent. So we got at least a, a few people that found their way back to the Academy Live yes. since we've had a holiday break. We actually we, had a long holiday break. We did, we did, we did, we, yeah, we really had a long holiday break uh, and it was really needed, I yeah. think. <laughs> it has been quite hectic before, you know, the last year, so. Yeah, it was really intense, especially the fall was very intense. Yeah. With, but a lot of fun projects and, uh, and we finished off the year uh, with a trip as well to a place and which we will see results of later uh, this year, I think. In April. In April? Yeah. Yeah. So cool. Then we'll be able to show and talk more about it. Yes. Oh, and we of course have our friend in Japan as well. Uh, the thin penumbra. <laughs> thin, thin, thin penumbra. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, so in California is here in Holland uh, as well. Well, today's topic, we're actually going to talk about the power uh, and all things around power, uh, which is um, I think it's a really broad important topic. Yeah, it's a broad topic, but it's kind of important to to put it out like this because I know there's a lot of misconceptions about power. I yes. think people uh, uh, they, they they think that the flash power uh, creates stuff that really hasn't anything to do with the power, and that is what we are going to talk about. We yes. are going to bring that up to clear all those misconceptions out. Hopefully, yes. Hopefully, and then we have. Yes. More from uh, Germany, Koblenz, and also Osa is here, uh, and we have people in Florida. Excellent. So I think we are plenty of people here that we can start. And also, if you have questions, pop them in the comments below, uh, and we will respond uh, to those live here. Yeah. And also, if you view this afterwards, which we realize that a lot of people that are watching this afterwards, uh, go ahead and comment. We go back in and we, we look at all the comments and, uh, and react to those. Uh, and also, if you have certain questions, uh, if you might have a question about something, whatever it be, high or low, uh, there are truly no stupid questions. Well, I'm, as I'm long as they are, have something to do with light. Yes, or, yes. Yeah, in the and light ar uh, areas. Exactly, yeah. Uh, and, and just to clarify, no, we do not, have, uh, we do not uh, make the decisions on, on when and what to launch. Uh, no. And we <laughs> We don't get uh, that much information either uh, on what's coming in the years ahead. Uh, so you can ask as much as we want and we still don't know the answer. Um, but anything around light um, and, and uh, uh, there uh, we can definitely uh, help you out. Yes. And also if you want to challenge him uh, with something. Challenge? What is a challenge? Ooh, what do you mean well, by a challenge? Just to give you a tough challenge. Like, I mean, Holly, when Holly Wren was here as a guest uh, uh, last year, uh, she, she uh, had this question I wanted to challenge you on how to create this shadow, the pattern of, of, uh, of um, shades on the window. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so if you have certain things, something you've seen in a picture or uh, some certain effect that you see either nature do or so forth, uh, or you see that in, in another person's picture, then... Um, yeah, uh, that is really interesting. I, I yeah. think that w w <coughs> when you're looking at the images uh, and try to figure out how is this, how is the light done, that is uh, really interesting because I think that you can, if you know what to look for, you can really read so much from, from the light, from the shadows, from the highlights and everything to, to tell how, how it's done. And if you have any questions like that, I really would love to have uh, those in here because uh, light, to discuss light, to talk and think about light, that is what we love to do. <laughs> yeah. So anything about light is very, very welcome. And we, we were actually, before we started this uh, live session, we were out in that direction where there's a little coffee area where some of the other pro photo people are uh, taking their coffees, etc. And we were... Uh, 
deeply in, in a discussion around how fast is a shadow. Uh, and people are just looking kind of strangely at us. And yeah, uh, <laughs> and, and you know, we, we were really, you know, really <laughs> into that discussion. How fast is the shadow? And we all know uh, the speed of light, but what's yeah. the speed of a shadow? Exactly. Yeah. Uh, and there is actually things to say about that, but we won't. But, we but won't not today. No, not today. <laughs> no. So anyway, then we already have a few questions here, uh, and of course more as well. Excellent. Uh, give a lesson on how to do pictures in church. There, there's always low lights. There's not much light in a church. No, there isn't. So, so yeah, that's an interesting topic. We can. That's a good one. We'll take that uh, all up on our list. And uh, uh, low light situation. And then we'll think about that and put together some uh, uh, good uh, responses and some some guide. Uh, some help that might guide you when you are shooting in low-light situations. Yes. Um, and, oh, I hope today's video will help me decide if I should go with B2 or B10. My main concern was that the B10 is only 250 watt seconds compared to the 500 watts of the B2. Well, Marius, uh, actually the B2 is, has, uh, is the same as uh, uh, the B10 and the B2 have both 250. Uh, 50 watt seconds, um, but actually the B10 is more efficient in how it's using the photons in it. So actually, you get almost half a stop more light coming out of the little round hole there yeah. versus the B2. Actually, the only uh, up thing that I know of from the B, uh, the B2 is that you have a, a slightly faster recycle time, yeah. which means that if you are like shooting action sports like a like a pole jumper, a pole like jumper or anything, anything pole and, you're gonna, jumper. and you're gonna have a series of images like then the B2 is slightly faster in, in recycling. Yes, it has a slightly faster recycling and um, some people feel it's actually a disadvantage, but for me, I like it, 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 it has a cable. It has a cable and, and you can put the weight down on the stand. Exactly, with the, so with you the have pack. the generator down there, so, uh, and then you have a very light head on yep. top. And you can have two heads. You can have two heads uh, with the B2. So, so they are. It's all depending on what you want. I, I like personally. I like the B2 a lot uh, because I like the two two heads. Because with 250 watt seconds, that's plenty of light. You can do a lot of it with that. And uh, so I can use one uh, to create something with the background or a hair light or a kicker, etc. And then I can have the second light as my main light. Uh, and I deliberately mention those in that order because that's the order I normally yeah. work. I start with from the background and work towards the camera and main light is the last one. So uh, can I ask you about the B2? I, 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 the price of a B2 with two heads versus two B10s, is it, I have no idea, is it like equal it, or...? That's a good question. I, I, I actually don't uh, have the prices in my head. Because if you get really two heads... No, you, I mean you can buy, you have the duo kit, you have two heads. I don't think it's... Uh, uh, it's uh, it's slightly more expensive with the uh, two B tens. Yeah. Uh, it is it, it uh, no uh, it is more expensive, but I don't know exactly how much. Yeah. Okay. So because but, but with but that you you get two times two hundred and fifty watt seconds. With the the B two with two heads you get yeah, uh, two hundred and fifty split, split on those two. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so that there's a difference. So. Uh, I, I don't know if we can help you that much, uh, and the, the, so those are the benefits of the B2. The B10, of course, has a lot of other benefits. It doesn't have a cable, it's only one unit, it's small, it fits easily in a camera bag. Uh, it has a uh, fixed light, which is really cool. Which you can change your color temperature on, That's yeah. re and that is really, really good when if you are, sh are using it for video, mm. that is uh, really so. good. So but we do have a couple of episodes. If you go into Profotos Facebook, where you are apparently right now, uh, and you go into the Profotos page and look at videos, there is uh, a couple of episodes when we go back and we actually even talk to the father of, uh, of the B10 uh, and we give you the whole lowdown on that product. So that might help as well uh, on that. But let's go back to uh, power. Yes. For a while. And while we're talking about power, if something else pops up, pop it in there and we'll talk about it. Yeah. Um, oh, yes, I forgot this one. There's a person who's seen a few pictures and videos uh, from Profoto Zenit. 
any, in, in, any information about the new product. Well, that is a, a, a prototype that has been sent out to test, uh, for test, uh, in it's a limited uh, edition of, of, of a light shaper called Zenit. And uh, they have uh, been sent to some rental studios to, to for really heavy usage and see how uh, it holds up and what type of light it gives out, etc. So, so it's just been out there. I don't know anything about launch dates, etc. Oh, so he meant B1. Uh, the difference with B1, well, uh, again, uh, B10 and B1. Well, the first thing that really pops into my head is, of course, the weight. Yeah. It is the weight. The B, I use B1 a lot. I have used it for years and I have a couple of them. Uh, I mean, they are more courses. Um, the B1X, uh, it's a big thing. It's really powerful and it's cool. But if you have the B10 for me, that is when you, if you have to move around, you know, the, the weight is everything there for me. Yeah, that is what I do. It's a huge, huge difference in yeah. weight. And then uh, light wise, and um, hopefully after today's episode, we'll, you'll see some. Because uh, this comes back to the misconceptions of, of, of power and, and, uh, and, and hopefully that will help you make your decision. And then Joel in Houston, hello, uh, is also mentioning that if you buy them, buy the, uh, uh, the backpack, uh, if you buy two of the B10s, you get the backpack. And because it's amazing. And I, we actually we talked about the backpack <laughs> yes before. It is, it is a really cool backpack. So I'm actually using it as my standard backpack. Yeah, me too, <laughs> all the time. It's, uh, yeah, but um, exactly because your question is you want to make the decision based on the power 500 versus 250. So I think that today's episode might give you some input. So yes. cool. excellent. So let's first take a look at some uh, uh, misconceptions. Yes, common the common and misconceptions. <laughs> and, and 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 here are some some things that. I've, I've thought as well uh, that when you turn up the power of, of a flash uh, or the light, light bounces around more. Uh, so it bounces around in the studio a lot more when I have uh, a higher power on the flash. Yeah, exp I think that if you have like white walls, you really, you really believe this. You really think that with more power, the light will bounce around more. Yes. And. Uh, uh, and of course, it reaches further. And if you put on the power, it will go yep. a lot longer. Exactly. Uh, it goes around corners. I mean, or around the face, or or so forth. Yeah. When I turn the more the power. power you have, the more corners it, it can go around. Exactly, exactly. Uh, and uh, it goes through matter, like exactly. paper or ears and so forth. It, it shines through. Exactly. If you have like a paper in front of a flash with really low power, it don't go through. But if you turn up the power, the light will go through. That is also something that, that, we, that we will uh, take up, that we will yeah. discuss here. Uh, oh, and light makes everything white. Yes, You've seen we, that when I turn on the power, the whole picture turns white. So everything uh, goes white. But exactly. Like, so the more power you have, the more everything will go white. Yes. That is misconceptions that at least I hear, hear a lot from people. Mm -hmm. And so on. Yeah. So these are all true, right? Well, mm, <laughs> not. I would, say, I would say not. So okay. the important part here is that our, our, our topic is that, uh, the topic of this is that um, how does, when you turn up the power of the light, how will the light's behavior change not how will the image change it is the behavior of light that people think is uh, is changed when you're turning up the power uh, and that isn't true because light doesn't sh change its behavior just because you have more or less power light itself is consistent it, it, it behaves the same way doesn't matter how much or how much or how little power you have so, so you have put together a couple of slides. I have, so, I have. So, so let's take a look at that. You have... Yes, this slide here. This is, uh, we have an eye to the right and we have this uh, gradient from really, really dark up to really, really bright. And that is supposed to look like the power of light from darkness to really, really bright. Like outside, you know, outside on a sunny day on the top and maybe down in a basement 
in the bottom there. Yeah. Okay, so our eye is, uh, we have this iris in uh, our eye and uh, that is totally controlled. Mm -hmm. The size of it is totally controlled by the ambient level. Uh, so if we have a darker ambient level, then our iris will, will go uh, much bigger just to bring in more, more light. Mm -hmm. There we go. Yeah. So we have the eye automatic exposure function in our eye. And this makes us believe that light, we, we know that light looks the same, even if, it's, if, it, even if it's dark or bright. Things we see outside on a sunny day or in a dark basement, we, we, we actually know and we see that light behaves the same, even, even though we have uh, much or little light. So if we have a really bright day, then our eye will, will fix that by exposure our uh, iris to a much smaller pupil. Is that a word? P uh, pupil? I, I pupil. think it's just, yeah. yeah. Um, but when we have a camera, the camera do not have an automatic exposure. Of course it can have, but if we are putting it on manual, then we are starting to see the effects when, when, we, do not, uh, when we let too much light or too less light into the camera. So on this slide, you can see to the left here that we have the sun. The ambient level here is the sun. And we let's expose our camera so the sunlight will be perfect. In the top, in the dynamic range of the camera, in the top part, we have, we have a perfectly, uh, how do you say, uh, perfectly exposed uh, bright parts. And in so the, the highlights are Exactly, are the highlights and everything is perfect, exactly. if we have exposed perfectly. And, he, and in the bottom of the uh, dynamic range of the camera, it is dark. Yeah. So the camera's dynamic range is much, much more narrow than our eye, okay? So uh, let's go into a dark place. Then we, of course, expose the camera again. And we have the brightest part, the highlights is perfectly exposed and the dark parts is really, really dark. And this is something you normally do with the shutter speed, right? You, 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 you let in the light for a longer period or a shorter period and then you get... Yeah, exactly. And yeah. you can of course do it with the aperture or the ISO too. Yeah, but, but with the aperture you also change the, the depth of field. Yeah. So if you only want to oh, yeah, address that's true. the So the, if the I, light. exactly, exactly. If you do not want to change... The, the look of the image then is the uh, aperture, uh, sorry, the, the shadow speed. But of course, if, or you're, ISO. if you are moving, I mean, all, all those three parameters actually change the image. The camera always changed the image. If you yes. change your shadow speed, you can get blurry images. If you change your ISO, you get noisy images. If you change your uh, aperture, you get maybe too long depth of field or too short yeah. de depth of field. So those three parameters still uh, change the image. The camera changes the image. And that is the key with this. Because if you have too much power for your exposure, then everything will turn white. If you have too much power for your exposure, then you think that the light will bounce around more because you get more light into the camera. But if you expose the camera so it's perfectly exposed, then it will look the same no matter how much power or little power you have. Yeah, so or if you're just in regular tungsten, then you, again, you have a little bit more light, but then you still expose the camera with, with shutter speed, ISO, etc., and then boom. And then you will have, exactly, you will have yeah. the same, the same the, you will see that the light actually behaves uh, the same. It doesn't mm. matter how much light or how little light. But then we have, of course, uh, the limitations of the camera. Like, if you cannot change, if you cannot expose the camera, so the, the exposure is, is good, then yeah. of course you will have these problems. Or if it is too dark and you can't expose for it, then it will have a problem. But as long as you can, you will see that the light doesn't change it, its behavior at all. It's all in camera. And we know this because we, we see it all times with our eyes that light doesn't change its, its behavior. Yeah. Okay, so we did actually a test when, um, yeah, well, yeah, so, yeah. so yeah, light Let's behaves. Conclude. Yeah. Light behaves the same regardless of power, but the camera doesn't. Exactly. Okay, that is the point here, that the light behaves the same, but the camera doesn't. Yeah. I mean, that is kind of, uh, it's no rocket science. I mean, it's kind of obvious, but yeah. still people really do make these uh, misconceptions mm -hmm. about light. So this is really important to 
to uh, to address, I think. Yeah. So we did this test. Yeah. So we've been here shooting. Of course, you see Ken, Ken is up against the wall as always. Yeah. And uh, this time we we used uh, we 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 tried this with the A1. We did it with the B10, and but then at the end we went with the with the Pro 10 and the Pro Head because there we have the biggest range. Basically, yeah. we can go from really really high like 2,400 watt seconds and all the way down to 2.4. Watt seconds. You can actually go uh, even lower, but we decided to s stop at 2.4. Yeah, and it's a huge difference between <laughs> 2.4 watt seconds and 2,400 watt seconds. Wouldn't be, I, I want to go over and just pop. Yeah. Uh, do, just, so do a pop. <laughs> I'll do a pop. Let's turn it on. So let's start with uh, really nothing. Uh -huh. Then we have, I don't know if it's even going to react over there. That's it. Okay. Boom. Nothing. Well, I think you can hear the sound. Yeah. It's like tick, tick, tick. Really, really unpowerful. And then when <laughs> we go with 10, okay, <laughs> close your eyes. Okay. Bam. Yeah. So there's a big difference between those two. Yeah. From 2.4 watt seconds to 10, uh, sorry, to 2,400 watt seconds, there's a really big difference. Yeah. Plenty, plenty, plenty difference. So first picture. We had uh, uh, 2,400 watt seconds and we adjusted the camera uh, uh, so that it, the camera's dynamic range was in the range for that much power uh, with a very short uh, uh, shutter speed yeah. and a, also a very low ISO. Yeah. Uh, what do you mean by the short shutter speed? Oh, sorry, uh, like like one four thousand or one eight thousand or or like that. Yeah, okay. So so short enough, and then also we, we popped up the the uh, the aperture. Uh, uh, we we closed it down so it's uh, uh, so smaller so that we can actually see it on the air. It's a little bit, it's sharp. Yeah. So it's not two point eight. Exactly. <laughs> it's uh, something else. Yeah. Eleven or something. Exactly. And, uh, and then we did the same picture, we, uh, the same shot, uh, and we did 240 watt seconds, and we did 24 watt seconds, and we did 2.4 watt seconds. And if, if we put all these pictures uh, right next to each other, like this, you see that there's not a lot of difference. Uh, uh, there are slight differences. Well, I would say that the, the, uh, uh, the behavior of, of the light, light is exactly the same. But the behavior of the light is exactly the same. But the camera, since you have changed in this case the aperture mm. to to uh, let the right amount of light come into the camera, then of course you will have effect. But that is the camera who has made the differences. Like the short depth of field on the 2.4 watt second, you can see that the air is much more blurry, blurry yeah. than on the 2,400 watt seconds where the air is sharp. Yeah, um, and uh, I think that is the the main thing. But but still. The light, the behavior of the light is the same. It doesn't change the contrast. It doesn't bounce around more. It doesn't go through the material and so on. Yeah. So it all, all behaves the same, which is uh, kind of cool. Uh, and then, the, well, of course, the, the immediate question is, when do you need more power? Yeah. And why? Well, I mean, if we say that the power of power doesn't matter, yeah. <laughs> why, why would you? Why do, why do you need more power? Why do Pro Photo sell a two thousand four hundred watt second uh, flash? Yeah, because and why do we love it so much? Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we had this. We put this list together uh, when we do need more power, and if you can come up with even m more, you know, really good points here, that would be really interesting. So our points were. You do need a lot more power when you are in strong sunlight because then you are competing with the ambient light. You need your flash to be as strong or stronger as the ambient light. Then you need a lot of power because outside on a sunny day, it is a lot of the ambient light is really powerful. Yeah. So that is one thing. And then, of course, when you need long depth of light, in other words, when you need to have uh, the same exposure over a, a, a big distance, like a group shot or, or uh, two people uh, standing um, a couple of meters in f away from each other and they both need to be equally bright. Or if you're going to shoot a person walking towards the light, 
and you want that person to be equally bright all the time, then you need a long depth of light. And to, in order to make that happen, then you need to have your light really, really far away. Because then you get a lot of parallel uh, rays of light. Rays of light, and the inverse inverse square law uh, has less impact versus if you're like half a meter and if you're really close with yeah, the light. Exactly. So then you the need to have fall off. Is, is, yeah, yeah, the fall off is, is more even. And yeah. the further away you have your light, the more equal the light power um, will be over distance. In other words, far away equal light, uh, mm -hmm. e long depth of light, but then you need a lot of power on that flash. So then you need a lot of power. Yes. I actually use, I, I do a lot of shoots when I have uh, my lights outside of a window. If I'm in a building, I have yeah. my lights outside to mimic the sunlight going, coming, in, coming through, but they can't have the lights close because then, then I will have a short depth of light. Yeah, yeah. And the shadows will diverge. I mean, that is, kind of another point there yeah you have, if you have the light closed then all the shadows will like point D out like diverge. this yeah, diver yeah, yeah. Diverge, yeah so the further away you have the light you will have longer depth of light and more parallel shadows and it will look more natural and then you need a lot of power on that flash mm -hmm. and you need to collect the rays with a i use a magnum no a, a tele zoom reflector tele -zoom, yeah. yeah so i collect the rays as much as possible so they are as straight as possible. possible yeah so i don't have this huge uh, light pattern this stamp of light that misses yeah so the, you don't the, waste a lot of photons exactly. on the rest of the so building i want all the photons to go into the the window yeah because then i need a lot of power in yeah. my in my flashes and then also the next point is to fill really large light modifiers. Yeah, I mean like if you have this uh, four by six softbox or... Yeah, which we can see... Yeah. Yeah, so over here, I mean <laughs> in both ends of the picture. Yeah. So, I mean if you have a, a flash inside, which camera is it? That camera? Yeah, that one, yeah. If you have a flash inside here, then you need to spread out all those rays of light, all those photons, so it's even from top to bottom like this. And when you do that, the energy from the center of your flash will be like this, will be stretched out and you will lose a lot of power. So then you need more power to have more photons to create this even, evenly illuminated uh, softbox area. So then you need a lot of power to fill the lights from big light modifiers. Yeah, and then you can get a lot more light coming out of it. Exactly. Uh, I mean, we did go through is there a difference between uh, a flat front versus a uh, extruding light bulb if, if, if they fill it in a different way? Okay, but you mean like a pro head versus a D2 or B1? Exactly, or so, so when, you, when you put them on the same wattage, the same power level, uh, there is no difference, no measurable uh, difference in how well it fills because there's an inner baffle, etc. Yeah. So it actually fills up, but uh, if you have the 4x6, for example, which is a massive softbox, um, it makes a difference if you, have two th if you fire in 2,400 watt seconds in it versus 1,000 or yeah. 250. Yeah. So if you want to go really big, really big, then it makes a difference. Yeah. And actually, that, that is the same if you're going to use a uh, white wall like for uh, indirect light. Oh, yeah, yeah, exactly. So if you want to, if you want to bounce exactly. the light. If you want to bounce the light, then you are actually creating a really huge light source that is, it is bouncing a, yeah, back. It's a, it's a huge light modifier. Ex the yeah, the becomes, becomes, yeah, and then you are, I mean, you are spreading out all your rays of light, which means that you will have on each <laughs> square uh, very few photons. Yeah. So you need a lot of photons on every square. In other words, more power to create that big light source to create a good light on, on your Which subject. was one of the tricks we did in, uh, in Tokyo. Yeah. When we wanted to, to light up, uh, lighten up the shadows, we, we fired one flash into the, in, in the up opposite direction of where the model was yeah, standing. To create the whole studio as a one really big mo modifier, just yeah, exactly. to lighten up the shadows well, without any shadow edges or anything. Yes, we, the whole studio was then a big, big, big light source and then therefore you got the really soft light yeah. and you didn't get any new shadows falling, but all the, the contrast in the shadows went down. Yeah, actually, I would like to do like this. Like, let's say that you are uh, our subject. Yes. 
uh, this is a flash. Mm -hmm. I aim it upwards, and this was the pro head with an extruding yeah. uh, flash tube. And then we just put up a, a flag in front of that, mm -hmm. so you don't see it, because then you will have a really hard light on you. Yeah. Flag in front, which will make create this whole room yeah. as a new light source. And a really big light source creates really wide penumbras, or shadow edges. In other words, you won't see any shadows from this light source. Yeah. And this is a really quick and fast way to create a super, I mean, really super soft light, almost too soft. So I think it's, it's a better use, better usage to, to use it as a fill light. Mm -hmm. So you have your light already, and the shadows are really dark, and you do this yeah, light and just bring up those shadows exactly as, so much, as much as you need. And this flag that you have in front of the uh, flash needs, doesn't have to be super big. No, just uh, If so you put it really close to the flash and then it's big enough that you can't see the flash yeah. uh, from within the, whatever you're shooting in that frame. Yeah, and I mean, so. of course, you, you could use, you could do have almost the same effect by using a 4x6 softbox in this direction. But it's kind of, you know, <laughs> it's big. Yeah. It's much more easy just to have a one tube, one, one flash tube, one flag, and mm -hmm. you will have an even better effect on yeah. that. Yeah, I think uh, th this one was that size. Yeah, I mean the flag. Pretty, yeah, the, the flag was pretty small. It's like two, two pieces of paper yeah. together. Yeah, so... Um, cool, and then we have in the next, uh, the last point, which is when you're using certain gels, uh, especially blue, yeah. like the CTB. Yeah, the blue gel is really eating power. Yeah. Um, Actually, that is because there is so little blue, uh, blue wavelengths in yeah. the light. Yeah. So when you have the, f the blue gel, it only, you know, let through. It on it's only the blue wavelengths that is going through. So if you have very little of them, you will have very little lights. In other words, the blue gel eats power. Yeah. Then you need a lot of power. And when would you like to use a blue gel? Uh, Why would you use a blue gel? Oh, well, for example, when we... Uh, in course number three, uh, how, uh, how, how to, to light, to light the, background. the background, we, we used the blue to create uh, uh, some uh, uh, skylight. Yeah. So, so like light, simulating light that's coming from a, a blue sky. Yeah, actually we did it in two ways. We did that, yeah. we had this blue shadowy thing mm -hmm. and we ha actually made the sky. Yeah, and then we made a... Sh uh, in a so the, with the a gradient in the background. And then we used a, a CTB filter to create, just light up a wall with blue, blue filter on, just to mm -hmm. make the wall blue. And that was our background through a window. Yeah. And we created this nice gradient. You have to see that movie to understand because yeah. it's... And it's on Portfolio Academy, uh, course number three. Yeah. If you buy the whole series, then you see it, of course. Uh, but then oh, you can also buy the individual courses. Uh, uh, but then that was really cool. Yeah. Uh, Oh, now we got some more questions here. Let's uh, go up. Uh, we had one here from uh, Michael in Germany. Is there, a, uh, if there was a, a wireless trigger for a, a B10 where a Seconic light meter could trigger it? Uh, I have not seen any solution from Seconic that is compatible with the Profoto uh, no. radio remote system. But actually, I, I used to, I, I remember when I, um, I uh, bought my first Seconic with radio trigger. Uh, it triggers um, um, power uh, Pocket Wizard, of course. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was like, hmm, I wanted to trigger Pro Photo. But when I really started to work with it, I have my, my transmitter in my hand. And the, fla uh, the flash meter, instead of pushing that, I'm just pushing the transmitter because the, the, the flash meter is always on metering. So it's not, it's not like two buttons or anything, just one button, uh, button and, and you just walk around and meter. So I didn't find it a problem at all. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so uh, we have... Oh, sorry, now I read it. Uh, no, no, we, oh, no yeah. it, it was exactly like that. So yeah. the, quest, the answer is, as you said, no, there isn't. I don't know if there is like a sync out from the Seconic meter and you can put it into a something into a, I don't know. That. Yeah, I haven't seen any. No, but I don't th see any wirelessly. As long as if, if you just have the transmitter in your hand, you can push those flashes with your thumb. Yeah, if you, you use the re uh, take a remote in your other hand. Yeah, right? exactly. But I think there is with like if you can trigger like with Pocket Wizard has something built in, I think. Yeah, you just yeah, put yeah, Pocket yeah. Wizard in, in it. 
And okay. then we have, uh, when we use ceilings, or bouncing the light against the ceiling with the power and depth inverse square law, rely on the on double of height from light to ceiling. So yeah. actually, when, when you're bouncing off a wall or a ceiling, that becomes the new light source. Yeah. So the all wall will become... Yeah. Or the ceiling, in that case. So then the ceiling, all the rules are exactly the same, but they are from that ceiling or that wall. Exactly. That so the wall has a certain distance. That is your new light source. And you get the depth of light, the inverse square law thing, based on the, the distance to the wall. Yeah. But I think that what you are after is that if you have the light, the further away you have the light that lights up your wall, you will have a bigger light source. Um, I think, is that maybe how you mean? Like you have to, it's some way of, you say it's a, uh, re rely on double of height from, uh, height from light to ceiling. You, maybe you could re rephrase well, that because yeah, I'm not, so, not so, sure what so, you mean there. I mean, if you have a really, really, uh, if, there's, if there's long distance to the ceilings, well, of course, the power from, from the flash to the ceiling is impacted by inverse square law, etc. And then from this, from the ceiling towards whatever you're lighting, you have a, that becomes your new light source. So that's where you have to do the calculations of yeah. So it does inverse work. square yeah. laws. Uh, we had here was uh, if we have done a video on freezing action with flash. Uh, have you? Well, we did one on HSS yeah. uh, where we actually talked about so a lot of people use uh, HSS uh, settings on the flashes and want to freeze uh, flashes. So that actually there is a video on that on, on Profoto's uh, uh, Facebook page. Uh, under videos and then you can scroll down you see Academy Lives episode 23, 22, 21 and then you'll see one where it says HSS uh, and if you check that one out that there is a uh, we have <laughs> I did my own little uh, fan uh, so I was freezing action with uh, all that fan the spinning uh, rotor on the on the fan so yes there is one uh, so you can just go in there it's on on Facebook Pro Profoto's Facebook page in, under videos hmm. Yeah, and uh, and HSS is not the way to go. No, HSS yeah. does, is. But you, uh, most uh, pro photo uh, flashes have a freeze uh, uh, function. So put it on freeze, then you get really really short flash duration, and try to kill as much of the ambient light like we have now. We have a lot of ambient light coming from from the ceiling. Try to kill that as much as you can, and then let the flash freeze the motion because the flash will always be a lot faster and shorter than any camera right now. The fastest regular cameras is one eight thousandth of a second, yeah. uh, while a flash can go up to one eighty thousandth of a second. So it's a lot, lot shorter and you can really be uh, freeze action. Yes, you can. Um, yes. And here we are. Is the B10 able to light a four by six softbox evenly? Uh, yes, it can, but uh, you cannot have it on, on, on a stand because it's too heavy. So you need to have a different solution on, on how to secure uh, the, uh, the 4x6. It's such a heavy, big modifier, uh, but it can absolutely uh, fill it because you have an inner baffle inside and, that, and the inner baffle actually, or the, the, uh, the inner diffusion uh, actually fills out the last bit so you, you get even light uh, just as even as you get with a with a pro head etc yeah so. and uh, I think that it's it, it's quite important that the thing you mentioned there because the b10 if you put a four by six on the b10 I think that the the you can crack the uh, yeah so maybe not crack it but it's it, it's, it's, it's too heavy yeah it's, it's too heavy for, the, for the uh, uh, for the, the lights and it's made for I think a three by four is the biggest yeah exactly because I I, I was thinking about the guy in the beginning there who was uh, thinking about buying a b1 or a b10 yeah that's the same guy oh yeah it's the same yeah hello <laughs> <laughs> hello same guy so <laughs> that is one thing with the b b1 with the b1 you can put it on anything yeah, yeah the b10 exactly. is yeah. maximum size is the three by four yeah that's true that's one difference uh, and then if you take a, a 
uh, B1 or Pro Head or any, any flash uh, and put it on 250 watt seconds, then you, you, you will fill up and it will have the same effect uh, across. But then, of course, the more power you have, the more you can get out of uh, the 4x6. This was uh, a question from, from uh, mi Mr. Thin Penumbra again. Uh, he wants to know <coughs> the Pro Photo Generator's history and he ends up with what is the difference between those prices and etc. And I understand him because there is so much, so much things out there. It's mm. hard to understand which is the new one, what's the difference exactly uh, and so on. Yeah, so, so and, yeah. and I think we did an episode when we go, went through, you know, actually from, from the start, I think. From the first Pro generator all the way to the B10. Just a short brief mention of every one of them. It's kind of interesting to see the developments. Yeah, and, 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 I, and, and I think in, in, in general uh, what you can say is that uh, what has happened is that it's um, uh, with the later products like I mean if you buy a Pro 7 or Pro 8 you get a whole lot of flash. It's still it's a, a, like a Pro 8A with the 2400 uh, watt second, it's a monster flash. Yeah. I mean, it's really, really cool. Uh, and the difference, I would say, is that one is that you have Air TTL. I mean, you have the, the TTL function, uh, which some people say, well, why would you use TTL in the studio? But it actually helps you. And if you just pop off one shot, then I get the power level to ballpark where I want to have it. Yeah, that's how so, he does it. So yeah. if you want to be like Anders, you use the TTL all yeah. the time. And then boom, it, it you know, gets me ballpark. And I can do minor adjustments, just tweak it and then it's, yeah. it's But there. if you do it like I do, I don't even, I, I just set it on what I want it to be because I nailed that without <laughs> any testing. Yeah, uh, but you're so old and yes. you have so many years of experience. <laughs> so when I turn 7,455 <laughs> years like you do, uh, then I will also have that gut feel. But if you don't have the gut feel, then uh, uh, you can do like I do, use the TTL. You can use the so TTL. Uh, and then also, of course, the, um, uh, with the new technology, uh, the Pro Photo engineers can control the curve, the flash curve, to, I mean, to ridiculous uh, precision. Uh, precision. Right? Yeah. It's just crazy. And they can make it almost square, they can make it in any shape, and then they, then they can do that a lot better with the Pro 10 versus a Pro 8, etc. Yes, and the, and the thing you get out of that is that you get really, you can get really fast uh, flash durations, so you can freeze yes. motion. So you can better. get really, I mean, the the flash duration on the on the Pro 10 is one eighty thousand of a second. Yeah, I mean, I take one second and split it up into eighty thousand parts. That's not long. No, that's about uh, how long my my. Uh, <laughs> My bank account stays filled when <laughs> I get money. It's like it's 180,000 of a second, and I waste it yeah. on stuff. Have you, have you seen any tests? You know, they used to do a test with a spinning disk where you can see what what it, uh, I mean, uh, what you freeze. Is there any tests yeah, like that? Uh, that disk is actually in the lab. Ooh. The lab, so, has yeah, the, the, the light lab. They have the disk, and and there's a different pattern. There's text and so forth, and then you can really see where at what speeds you can um, or at, at what yeah. how short it needs to be to freeze it so cool okay and i it's see hello crazy. from nils lövholm hello yeah. nils the, the nils was an intern of mine a uh, really good photographer he's going on um, uh, the best school in sweden right now uh, say hello to the school and to oh. everyone else at nordens <laughs> fotoskola and then we have michael he wants to give an example of flash to use with Dress <laughs> on horses. Well, I know Michael. He shoots a lot, uh, a lot of horses, and, and he shoots. For, he's shot uh, a lot of these big horse competitions, and uh, and actually, you have actually done that. You yeah. did some really nice portraits as well. It long. wasn't on competition though. It was no. really controlled environment. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know if my way of doing it is applicable in <coughs> in uh, like. In his During question, the dress exactly dress because yeah. I used uh, the uh, big um, giant, oh, yeah. <laughs> and I don't know if that is so it, it, smooth to bring along on a <laughs> on, on the public on, on the big uh, competition. No, <laughs> uh, there is no a, a wink, a winky smiley there. Yeah. So, uh, but I mean, I mean, flashes and horses. Yes, that is uh, normally in interesting. Yeah, yeah, because and, and some some horses are really. 
they are really intrigued by it and they think it's really fun and be like, oh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to pose, pose for you. Yeah. And other horses are, I'm going to kill you. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to be, I mean... Uh, be careful. Yeah, be careful. Yeah. And then, Jim asks, is, is the color temperature the same on all recent Pro Photo lights, specifically D2, D1 and B1? And I said, no, it's not. It's not exactly the same, uh, but within one product, if you have a D1 or a D2 or a B1, it's consistently at a certain point. So let's say that the, uh, if the D2 is a uh, couple of hundred Kelvin degrees colder or warmer, it's cons consistently at that temperature, sort of very, very consistent at the same temperature. But there are small differences uh, in between products, and that is, comes back to uh, how they have shaped the flash curve um, yeah. on those different products. So for some, you have, might have a longer tail, and that in the tail end, that's where you have most of the red colors coming in, or the warmer colors. And then in the beginning, you have the, the, the colder blue ones. Yeah, so they, that depends on, and also if you, put the, uh, a, if you have a D2 and you put it on freeze mode, your, your, uh, your image will be colder, so slightly bluer. Um, in other words, less tail. Because you cut off the tail, that's yeah. what we're doing. So you, you, you use... Uh, flash cutting technologies, you cut it off, you cut off the, the red light. Uh, so there's a difference. And Daniel, oh here's a one. Uh, oh, it's, it's about the uh, What was the, the difference, uh, advantage of the mains dock and the universal car adapter for the 7B, uh, B2, B3? One powers the system through mains power directly and the other one through battery, other differences. There's much, there's, there isn't much information on this on the internet. Well, uh, certain, one thing is that, for example, if, if you use a car adapter uh, or, you, or, or a car, the, uh, the current is more uneven. Yeah. It's not as controlled as you have if, if you have a, a, a mains outlet, because mains outlet is normally very, very stable. Uh, and the same sometimes when you had diesel, uh, these b d diesel generators, they also fluctuate a little bit. And, and so uh, if in few of these, uh, you actually have uh, electronics that will protect your gear against those variations of, of uh, current. Yeah. Okay. Well, here's one, one 80,000 or one 8,000. Well, so a camera can do one eight thousand of a second but the flash can go to one eighty thousand of a second so eighty thousand of a second it's so like eighty thousand eighty thousand <laughs> yeah parts of a second yeah. uh, while the camera can only do uh, eight thousand of a second Niels asks if the flash duration is increased with the freeze mode will you be limited to a certain level of power of the flash like a speed light uh, well, increased or decreased, because in freeze mode you decrease, you have a shorter flash duration. Uh, so you will, it's not limited uh, to a certain level of power. You can do it uh, across the whole range. Uh, and in general with, uh, 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 with uh, uh, the uh, uh, pro photo flashes is that the lower the power is, the shorter the flash is. And uh, uh, if you have a, a higher power, then the flash is longer. The flash duration is longer. Uh, I have to ask uh, the same thing as Niels asks again, because uh, he, I think he, he says that if you, have a really, if you have this freeze mode yeah. and power level 10, mm -hmm. is it the same power level 10 as without freeze mode? Yeah, because yeah. the only thing, it, 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 you, you cut. You cut the, uh, the tail. Yeah, but in other words, less power out, less less energy is going out. But if you have it longer in the beginning, then I, I don't know. If yeah. So then also comes to depends on when when and where you cut it. Yeah, because if you have a a slow burst like this and you cut it, maybe I can draw it on this guy here. Yeah. Let's go over to this guy here. Uh, let's see if I can... And then, Marius, I'm going to answer your question about why would you need 180,000 of a second. And then we'll see if we are still in contact over here. I guess not. No, nope. We're, we're not. We're not. Uh, so, if you... 
If you entertain me, I'll, I'll, I'll try to... I will entertain you. <laughs> I can answer uh, Mario's question. Why would you need one eighty thousandth of a second if the camera can only freeze one, eight, uh, uh, one over eight thousandth of a second? Uh, the thing is that if you have your camera on one uh, exposure of one minute, but it's dark, and your flash is going in that, then you have that 80,000th of a second. So the, the shutter speed doesn't have anything to do with the, with the flash duration. Okay? If, the, if, if the shutter speed is faster than the flash duration, then it will, things will happen. Then you will start to see the first or the second curtain. Uh, but let's say that you're going to, to freeze this um, thing when I drop it like that. And you want the flash to go in the middle here. Let's say we have this laser thing that triggers the flash or something like that. Boom! The flash is 180,000th of a second, okay? So this will be really freezed because the rest of the fall uh, is in darkness. So the camera won't register anything of that. It's only registered the, uh, the flash part. So that is why you need to have faster flash durations than uh, the shutter speed. Okay, so you could actually do, I, I, I did uh, this uh, shot one time with one person da dancing and two cameras, one from in front and one from the back. And they were going to print this dancing person on a one-to-one -one scale uh, um, and uh, put the back and front together like that. So they needed to be exactly at the same time. So what we did was we have this, you know, long shutter speed, really dark, and then one flash, boom. And then we froze the moment. So the shutter speed is one thing and the flash duration is, flash duration is one thing. And uh, you can use them in advantage with each other. Uh, and we had this question from Pascal about T0.5 uh, versus T1.1. Uh, uh, and I suppose that the numbers you are talking about is, is T0.5. Uh, yeah, exactly. So it all depends on where do you measure it? Uh, most flash vendors measure at the T05, where you lost 50% of the power, and others when you are down at 10% of the power, which is T01. So it's different, different uh, uh, areas where, when, and where you measure. Yeah. So it's just as long as you measure on the same, that is, you're, you're consistent on it. Uh, but uh, we were back to that curve. I can't get that one uh, up and running. <laughs> it did gave up on me. Uh, but if you have a a, a kind of a, a slow, uh, long flash curve, but boom, uh, and you cut it here in the in the early part, you only get to a certain part, and then you, you miss the peak. But in most cases, it, you have most of the energy is coming actually in the beginning. Yeah, and then and it this, takes down. And this actually, this is the amount of energy. Yes, and the amount of energy actually equals the Kelvin degrees as well. Yeah. Yeah. So if you cut it in the beginning, this is really really cold. And the further way down, you get the warmth. And the total Kelvin you get on your image is actually the mea del verde. Oh, the, the average. The average. Of the peak. Of the total, the yeah. yeah, exactly. So, but yes, it, it, when you, you, you do lose some, but it's so little power at the end on the, on the tail. So if you measure the, the watt seconds or, or, or uh, how much output you get, you can't really tell and that big of a difference, but you do lose some, but not much, because yeah. most of it comes up in, in the beginning. Yes. Um, Where are we? Oh, which model does 180,000? It is the Pro 10. Pro 10, uh, the Pro 10 generator is the, the absolutely fastest. And then the D1, uh, you're correct, that one is, uh, and also the D1 is a bit uh, different all the way. The, the technology is very different uh, versus the other digital one. Mm. Uh, is HSS boost update for B2 possible, such as uh, A1? Uh, no, it's not. Uh, there is not uh, uh, currently any uh, feature like HSS boost, which you have on, on the A1. Uh, yeah, and that is because the A1 is newer to technology uh, with better or another way of controlling the, um, the flash. Yeah. This question from Stefan Schaaf, what does high, high speed, uh, high S boost 
mode at A1 do? I yeah. also wonder that. Do you know that? Is it like yeah, just more power? Yeah, we have a power? whole episode on, on oh, that. Oh, I missed yeah. that one. <laughs> <laughs> to it's, see it's, that one. You're going back to the HSS episode that we, we've been pointing at. So, so the, the, the long version and the more detailed version, uh, go into Profoto's uh, Facebook page, click on videos, and you will find one episode called HSS, and you see it. I've done a lot of uh, yeah, but pictures and graphs, and, but in general what you do is that uh, when you do a regular flash, it goes boom, and then you have a tail and goes down. But when you do HSS, it goes up, and then it pulsates at a certain level. And it's always lower than the highest peak. So there's a, there's a big gap. And what they did with the A1 is that they moved this pulsing level higher up. So it's pulsating at a higher level. So that's all they did on it. Mm. Yeah. That's fantastic. You yes. have, su have such a good memory. Yes. yes, but it's all there in detail. I talk about it for about an hour, and I draw stuff, uh, and uh, and I show sample images with and without boost. I had the beautiful Ken out uh, in the sunlight, actually, yeah. uh, uh, by the ocean. Such a, such a nice shot. Ah, oh, it was beautiful. Yes. <laughs> so it, it, it's nothing as it's worth to check that episode out. Yeah. Uh, and uh, just have to try freeze mode. Uh, why haven't I already? Yeah. Uh, I think every product has freeze mode. I think most, most of them have. Uh, I'm wondering now about the A1 if it has freeze mode. A1 might be the only one that does not, because it has a very, very short flash duration anyway. But the, the B10 does, uh, <coughs> B2 has, B1, D2, etc. Yeah, and the A1 has, I don't know either if it has a freeze mode or not, but I don't, know, I don't think so, because it, it's actually about the flash tube. How long is the flash tube? Because it takes time to lighten up the flash tube. And when you have a really small flash tube, as the A1 does, mm. you have a really fast uh, flash, uh, duration, flash yeah. duration. And we got Jared Platt here as well. Jared, hello. Hello, and uh, yeah, Jared is, uh, if, you ha if you haven't checked Jared Platt out, Google him. Uh, he has a great website, also great content uh, and, and also you know follow him he is a fantastic instructor uh, he has done a lot of work with Profoto uh, he was at the launch of the A1 yep and he was uh, one of our uh, great helpers in the cave we put him in a cave that's kind of rude <laughs> sorry Jared uh, but uh, it uh, turned out great because it was really cool images created yeah. in the and in I the owe cave. you a call because uh, we got some new cool stuff coming up uh, we're doing some other stuff with, with Jared. So I, I will call you, I promise. I'm just waiting for the final uh, goes on it, but it, it, it's, it looks pos positive. So anywho, talk to you very, 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 very soon. Uh, yeah. So anyway. Can I squeeze in one detail about power on the, the Pro 10? That I, I think we might have mentioned it earlier, but for me it was like a, a big eye opener. That was the last thing we did on the last episode before Christmas break. Yes, and I'm still <laughs> shocked. <laughs> okay. You do not need to dump the Pro 10. <laughs> I will say it again. You do not need to dump the Pro 10. Like if you're on power level 10 and going down to power level 1, all that energy, where does it go? You need to dump it, but it takes care of it. It's like, for me, it's like it feels in my stomach. Now I remember <laughs> that we have talked about that, but <laughs> it, I'm still in it shock. It was the last point of our 10 yeah. <laughs> uh, misunderstandings <laughs> about light. <Yeah. laughs> you don't need to dump on the Pro 10, that is. Yeah, exactly. O almost like a t-shirt print. Yeah. Don't dump oh, the Pro Mark 10. Oh, Mark Brodsky, hello from New Jersey. I'm sad that I missed all of this video. Well, but you know, it's, it will be there, so you can just go back and check it afterwards and uh, maybe bring your friends and family around and, uh, and watch us again. <laughs> yeah, uh, mm. Jim has a question because I, uh, the D1, does it also have a, f a freeze mode? I don't think, I don't think so. I don't have any freeze button on my D1s. No, that's right. That probably came with the, uh, the D2s. I think so. Uh, we should know. We should know. Yeah. Oh, this is embarrassing. Yeah. You got us, Jim. Uh, <laughs> But we're human, uh, yeah. so that's good. Uh, we will check that out and we will uh, get back to you on, in the comments. Uh, and we will definitely change, change that. Talk about uh, <laughs> how, how HSS, HSS changes, changes the power, power again. Jared, there's a whole episode about HSS. Uh, if you go to uh, this page where you are now in uh, Facebook's Pro Photo page, 
uh, and go into videos. There's a whole Academy Live episode on HSS where I go through it all in and out. So, <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, so just go in there and, and we'll get it. Otherwise, I'll walk you through it uh, next time I see you. <laughs> okay, here yeah, we have yeah, a question yeah. from Daniel Z. Uh, what is the amount of color loss in Kelvin between the Pro Head and Pro Head Plus on a Pro 10 across the maximum? Oh, would it go? Oh, even uh, the maximum and lowest power level. Uh, the Pro Head and Pro Head Plus. Is there any difference in the flash tube or anything? No, I mean it, uh, the way light behaves in in the, the plasma in the tube, the, uh, the, there is a difference in in, in color. Uh, uh, when you go from maximum to the 0 0.1, which is the lowest. Yeah, but is there a difference between the Pro Head and Pro Head Plus? Oh, no, 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 yeah, no, 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 no. So not a, not a difference uh, between the heads. Yes, that's, it's the same across. Yeah. And it's not big. Uh, oh, Mark wants to freeze bullets. Uh, no, you, you, will you, uh, will, if you want to freeze bullets, will uh, one eighty thousandths of a second do it? Uh, I don't think it will, you mentioned, and you're absolutely right, it will not. Uh, the bullet is faster than that, so you cannot freeze a bullet with that. You could maybe freeze an arrow, you're getting close to an arrow, depends on, of course, which bow you're using, but uh, it is uh, And if you are fast. moving backwards when you're shooting, you can make the arrow go, <laughs> go slower. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, um, um, uh, yeah, so no, it, you can, cannot freeze bullets yet uh, with the Pro Photo Flash, because it's, it's too long. Uh, oh, why is the button on the A1 so bright? When you're in a dark uh, area, it, it, it could actually uh, uh, be... Because it's so too. close to your yeah. own eye. Uh, Maybe you could do a, like a a screen thing you, you can put on under. I, yeah. I can 3D print one and, and you can mass produce it like you put it under there. So, so you are shielded from the brightness from <laughs> Yeah, no, but that's also one thing that, that we can feed back to the development yeah. team and, and the, so that they can actually, because uh, they can adjust that. It's all in, in the firmware updates. Yeah, so, that so would be a really cool, cool uh, adjustment just yeah. to set the level of the dim level. I, I agree, I yeah. do agree, because when you are like in an event, when it's dark, you, you really get that light in your eye, so I do. Oh, agree. we got our friend Bootwitz on here as well, and he was looking for the freeze mode knob on the D1s. No light. No. Thank you, Bootwitz, on and because uh, that's what we suspected. There is no. no freeze mode on D1. No freeze mode on D1. Yeah, and Jared Platt, he's sorry for coming in late. Oh, you better be, better be sorry for coming in late. Uh, so that's good. <laughs> yeah. And Mark Brodsky wonders how fast do you need to have your flash duration to freeze a bullet? Uh, well, again, that comes to depends on which gun. You have some of these high velocity guns that are really, really fast. And you can go back, uh, backwards. <laughs> <laughs> yes, you really go backwards fast. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, so, so that's uh, cool. And also Bootwitzon, uh, which is actually a tip for all you uh, light nerds out there. Bootwitzon has the best uh, tutorials on, on uh, shooting products. Yeah. Check him out. In, on YouTube, uh, check, uh, uh, search for Bootwitzon and you'll find uh, really, if you want to shoot like watches or uh, perfume bottles and so forth, it's really, really uh, cool. Yeah. Maybe we should invite him over. Maybe we should. Martin, yeah. would you like to come here and discuss some really yeah. nerdy stuff? Yeah, do cool. some, uh, some nerdy stuff with us over here. Uh, so, or, or maybe we can uh, go to him. Let's ask him. Yeah. We so, get in touch. Yeah, because that's really cool. Uh, and, and to see some really cool yeah. things. And then we have <laughs> this guy, Johan yeah. Norme, and I don't know who that is. He says, are the creature living in David's beard? Yeah. I have some. <laughs> I do. <laughs> I think you will check them out <laughs> exactly. on the 8th. Uh, cool. So we've had a lot of good questions. Really appreciate that, guys. Uh, it is, though, uh, time flies when you have fun. Yeah, it does. Uh, and and we, we need to wrap them up. Keep the questions coming. We will uh, uh, make sure that we cover those and we go in and check all, all your uh, answers. Uh, or no, we questions. will answer. We yeah. will answer your questions. That's what I'm trying to say. <laughs> confused. Exactly. Yeah. I shouldn't take those drugs with the small smiles on before. <laughs> Not alive. before. Not before. After. After pills. After. Smiles. Pills. Smiley pills. After. Okay. Cool. 
cool. Uh, the man who froze the world. Oh, yeah, interesting. We got a, we got a link from, uh, from John. Uh, that we need to check bbc.com bbc normally have really good stories yeah, yeah. and i guess it's about uh, it's about a man who froze the world a man who knew know how to freeze bullets perhaps oh, maybe. i don't know maybe cool. thank you john for the link we'll, we'll check it out afterwards. small pill with smile and uh, a movie yeah <laughs> exactly <laughs> Well, anyway, thank you so much for, for joining us today. And thank you, David, for yeah, coming thank over. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and, uh, and, and till next Wednesday. Uh, I think you're gone next Wednesday. Am I? Yeah, I think Where you are. Where am I? I think you're at Nordens Fotoskola. You're at I the, am. At the oh, photo is school. It, am I, is it already now? Yeah, mm, yeah. I think it's next, next Sorry. Wednesday. Yeah, I have to update my, my calendar. Exactly. So then you are all alone. Well, maybe Mar Martin will come. Yeah, maybe, Martin. Maybe we bring Martin over next Wednesday. If you're not uh, busy next Wednesday or any other Wednesday at five o'clock, uh, we'll have you over. Yeah, that would be cool. Uh, so anyway, thank you so much, and uh, I'll uh, we'll see you guys very soon. Same bad channel, same bad time next Wednesday, five o'clock. Uh, we'll be here. No, he well, will be here. I will be here. Yeah. yeah. Maybe and Martin. Or someone else, yeah. who knows. Maybe Johan or Mian, the guy who thinks I have <laughs> stuff in my beard. Anyway, thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. <laughs>